Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And as promised, the massive build series is starting on Rob's MX-5 today. We're excited, you're excited. Here we go, no more NA, turbo time, let's go. So I have bought the full Motorsport Electronics turbo kit with a couple of extras. Um, so let's do a little unboxing. We'll go through what is with the standard kit and then we can just go through what I've specced as little extras, which are slightly different. And hopefully that guy will stop cutting his grass in a minute. Let's start with the obvious. This is the downpipe that they supply. Um, different, they are different for Mark II and Mark 2.5. I'm hoping this is gonna meet straight up to my cat, uh, or sports cat. So we'll see how that gets on. Looks quite nice quality. Um, we have the most important part, which is... Sainsbury's carrier bag. The Sainsbury's carrier bag. The Wooshy Boy. So that's a TDO4. Um, not sure if it's new or rebuilt, but that is the one that comes in their kit. We then have the G19 cast manifold. Really nice quality. Um, probably the best manifold on the market for the TDO4 platform. In here we have some instructions, which normally comes with the ECU, but my ECU is on back order. That should be coming this week. So that's always very helpful. We have the silicone hoses to meet the intercooler to the turbo and the intake. Uh, extension loom for the temperature sensor. Some V-bands. We then have a intercooler. I would like to say it's very well um, packaged. Very well packaged. There you go. And they pre-install the air temp sensor in there as well. Looks quite nice. And then the last box is uh, water lines for the cooling of the turbo. We have, that is a um, oil return, sump, sump oil return kit for the turbo. Is this? Oh, yep, yeah. boost controller. This is the oil feed for the turbo. That is an extra. We then they do also give you a ram air filter, which I will not be using. That's going on my Mark One, isn't it? Oh, they don't want to lose those. And then we have some. Bosch injectors, which are a little bit overkill apparently, but the other option is to use the R8, RX8 yellow injectors, but there's so many fakes on the market, it's not really worthwhile. And last but not least is some general fitting studs for the turbo to the manifold, the EGR delete kit. And then we've also got some upper fittings, I think, for the cooling for the turbo manifold, etc. So that is what comes in the standard kit then. So that should be able to give us up to 250 horsepower. Um, 
at the flywheel, supposedly. What we're missing is the ECU. ECU options, we have the ME221 or the ME442, and I have ordered the ME442 just for a little bit of future-proofing with wanting to use um, some CAN bus stuff later on and stuff like that. It has a few more options on it. So yeah, that is the standard kit. Um, what I have done slightly differently is instead of using um, this oil return, which you will have to drill the sump for, I have decided to use the G19 oil dipstick return instead. So this is about 70 pounds, comes with the hose and some O-rings. And it just means I don't have to drill the sump in situ. Which is good. Which is good, because that ain't good. And then other bits, what we've got here, got two more boxes, but they do not come in the kit, is the addition of a clutch in there and then we have also because we have to use a 1.8 clutch because this is a 1.6 you need a flywheel so we have a lightened flywheel so I think that's an R RBC I think can't quite remember the make yeah RPC lightweight flywheel 3.3 kilograms. Very naughty gear. gear. So that is everything that you need to turbocharge your Miata. Supposedly. We'll find out when we start. Yeah. So other things we're going to be doing today probably is just a little bit of stripped down. Um, taking all the intakes off. When I say intakes, the intake, because I have one. Um, exhaust manifold, I'm going to try and get off, because um, I know I've already got a rounded bolt on that, so that's going to be quite fun. Angle grinder. And. Yeah. Everything you've seen here, apart from the uh, oil return, sort of dipstick oil return that I'm using, was bought from Motorsport Electronics and the dipstick oil return you can buy direct from G19 Engineering here in the UK if you wish so. Um, neither of us said anything like this before so you know it's one of the reasons I bought this kit is because it came with some instructions which is sort of you know I've had a flip through and it doesn't look too difficult so I'm going to be pretty much following this mostly throughout um, deviating when I obviously think I know better and then making mistakes so we're going to try and fill everything probably from every nut and bolt that we're going to be taking off and putting on this car so, join us for the ride. Now, I'm going to start by just removing my intake then. Um, I'm going to be reusing my HKS, that's the wrong size, HKS um, mushroom filter for this build rather than the Ram Air. Pretty sexy. So that's going to be there, hopefully. It's going to look really cool. It's going to look really, really fun. Really cool, man. So I think it is this temperature sensor we're going to need to cut off and repurpose the loom for the intercooler, so I'm going to make sure I remember where that falls down somewhere. And we will no longer need this, so we're going to have to get, there's not one in the kit, a breather filter for up here until I get a catch can set up. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I think, I think, my brain, my brain. Yeah, turbo on, let's go. Turbo on, let's go. You. Fucking hell, everything's so rusty. Oh, okay. 
What I need to do then is get this um, the heat shield off the exhaust manifold. Uh, I've already taken a bolt, a bolt, a bolt off before where I've previously tried to remove this rusty beast. A little bit penetrant on there. That is the bracket that holds the um, lambda sensor, and there is one right down here, which no longer looks like a bolt, but hopefully we'll identify as one by the time we're finished. This exact bolt is how I lost my 10mm Baco set socket. And you're about to lose mine. Yeah, so you can just... bendage out of the way, and if not, I'll have to cut it, but... just that bolt down there, which is a bit of a... Well, that certainly works. So that will come with the exhaust if I ever manage to get it off. I've just removed this heat shield from the bottom, um, just underneath the gearbox. You must have a little bit where we see where I've been low and slow. So hopefully now that's out of the way, I can get a bit better access to bolts. First time? Yes, this is my first time. Am I on undo? That, I really recommend getting one of these because that would have been an absolute nightmare without. It's like a. It sends your spanner for a lot more leverage. So the 22mm VGR pipe, which is just there. Yeah. Right, well, I think we'll leave it there for today. Um, I need to go buy some sort of. I think a metal saw um, just to cut through the bracket that mounts the gearbox because I. I don't actually need that and I can't seem to get the um, 
the bolts off the gearbox off very easily to be honest not this high anyway um, so yeah stay tuned for more pain and sadness Next.